is a very army wicket. Can we fix it? Yes, yes we, we can. can. Loud and proud. Everywhere we go. The Army Army started off in 1994 on a bank similar to the one we're stood on right now uh, over in Adelaide. A few guys out back, back, backpacking in uh, Australia watching the ashes and getting battered as per usual but still singing loud and proud and uh, a clever o Aussie journo dubbed, uh, dubbed them the Barmy Army crazy uh, and together still, still singing. So yeah, that's pretty much the brief history. A few of them made some T-shirts, Atherton's Barmy Army on the front sold pretty well and then came back home and decided to get a trademark for it and pretty much the business has taken off from there with fans at the forefront still to this day uh, and as you can see behind me it's just grown and grown it's amazing to see so many people out here having a good time. Jimmy Anderson, Jimmy Anderson. When he makes it swing, the bummy always sing for Jimmy Anderson. Chris Millard, Managing Director of the Barmy Army. Um, been doing it for seven years now, five years as a boss. So we've, we've been slowly building the operation over the course of the last uh, five to seven years where we've, we've put a bit of infrastructure in place. Now we've got travel manager, membership, events. We've, we've almost got a person for every role now. So my job has, has primarily become just looking after everyone else, making sure everyone does the job and we have a successful tour. I've always loved cricket. I've always been a passionate cricket fan from, from the, the day I could really throw and catch. It's something that I've always... Um, always taken very seriously watching playing just loving the sport and fortunate to grow up um, in very close proximity to the root family and uh, we've always been quite close friends and he actually informed me that the barmy army is a thing and is an operation it's something that you can get involved with and i actually started doing work experience when i was at university for the barmy army went on my first tour to south africa thought right this is it i think this is the way to live your life going to watch cricket whilst uh, working at the same time so that was in 2015 um, I'm still here in 2023, I'm the boss now and I'm running the operation uh, from our Sheffield HQ which is not far from where I live and um, things are going well. One song, he's only got one song, he's only got one song, he's only got one song. So we have around about 6,000 paying members and they get access to our tickets um, pretty much around the world. and. For example, the Ashes this summer and lots of other different benefits with that commercially and so on. So, yeah, lots of paying members. Also, lots of people who just come to the cricket for a day and come and stand next to the trumpeter. So it's very wide ranging. Um, I think the thing that's most surprised me about it is that it's, it's not just a load of drunk blokes. There's lots of families that get involved with us as well. Lots of women and it's just becoming more and more diverse, bigger and... I think better for it and uh, a lot more enjoyable in the conversations you have. Some of the people you meet, it's just amazing. Hi, I'm Gemma and I come from London. I used to go to Cheltenham Cricket Festival um, when we were growing up, so we kind of heard about them in the 90s and then saw them when I was in Abu Dhabi watching cricket and I was sitting near them and said, oh, can we sort of come and join in? And we went to a charity party. And then I think I met uh, a lovely girl out there as well. And then we sort of went to Sri Lanka and then we went a few more places. And now I've been lucky enough to go everywhere from Bangladesh to Pakistan and here a few times. So it's um, been a great experience and it's great to come to lots, normally lots of sunny, sunny countries and meet lots of new people. It's lovely to watch the cricket on a real cricket ground. Good cricket being played. This is my fourth tour here. India three times, Sri Lanka three times. I've only been one to the convict, Lance, though. 
when we won 3 1, 10 11, West Indies 2 or 3 2. I have done them all. There's a fair few who were there on the 94 trip. Some of them are getting a bit older, maybe, so they don't tend to tour as much anymore. But it's, uh, yeah, there's, there's, there's loads here that will proudly show you the badges on their head of all the places they've been to over the years. Um, yeah, it, it, they're very much at the core still of the, the organisation side of things and still writing songs and, and having a good time. We are the England! We are the England! The mighty, mighty England! The mighty, mighty England! We are the army! We are The name's Graham Barber, or not commonly known on tour as Big G, or Big Graham. First time was 1998, just travelled on my own, didn't know anyone, just rocked up with the MCG. We won, which made it memorable, and joined in ever since. Then Melbourne, Sydney, and then I think this is my fifth or sixth visit to New Zealand. Done all the test playing nations numerous times, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, as well as the Caribbean, Australia, South Africa. So, yeah. Only Zimbabwe left to go when we finally get a test team out there, still test all out there. My name is Simon Finch, uh, aka Finchy. I'm the Barmy Army trumpeter. Um, I've been doing this, harping it out for the Barmy Army since. Well, I'm kind of like officially live in the ground after when I went COVID, kind of. Things reopened after COVID. And, uh, it was Ashburton 2021 against New Zealand, in fact. That was my first test actually live. But I was doing some stuff online, Facebook Live and stuff like that, when England were playing West Indies and Pakistan in the home in the, in, the, uh, in the COVID tests. I was due to start before, before that for the Sri Lanka test uh, at the beginning of 2020, but that got cancelled because obviously COVID, the Carol Polis. And uh, yeah, so I was sort of up in the air. But yeah, here I am now. I'd like to say first for Duffy, but it's not. <laughs> start of every single day, Jerusalem, uh, get the players going and then also at the start of each innings and uh, again just the growth of it's amazing. I think I joined a few years ago and uh, now you, you see more and more people getting involved with it and brings everyone together you know the morning after the night before and also again I think the players love it, gets them set for the day and gets stuck in hopefully. Bill Cooper was the original. He was did it for 15 years. It started quite organically, really. He was he was a trumpet. He's a great trumpet player. He's a professional in London. Plays for the you know, all sorts of orchestras and, and, and West End shows. Um, he was on holiday in the West Indies when he finished music college when he graduated, and just had his trumpet with him to keep in keep in keep in nick, and uh, started playing it at, at the grounds, and it kind of evolved from there. And of course, I've been a Test match particularly Test Cricket fan for many years and I've been watching it on television on Sky Sports and listened to it on Test Match Special on the radio and I knew, obviously, I knew of Bill and I'd always thought, I'd love to do that, I'd just love to do that and I thought, but he's never going to give that up because it's the best gig in the world, eh? And then it was like on TV and radio that he, oh, Bill Cooper, Trump, this will be his last tour and I was thinking, oh my goodness, whoa, OK, right, there's an opportunity here. So I did something I'd never done before. After he stepped down, I'd, I'd sent an email to the, to the office. I didn't know the, I knew the Barbie Army, of course, but I didn't know the, the guys. I didn't know the organisation. I didn't know how it worked. I sent an office, an email to info at barmyarmy.com and uh, said, uh, are you looking for a trumpet player still? Have you got anyone in mind? Um, are you, what are you doing, auditions and stuff? And I sent them my CV. Uh, 
Uh, my CV's pretty good. Like, I played with, um, I, like, I did Blur's last World Tour. Uh, I've had like Glastonbury with Florence and the Machine. I've played with Liam Gallagher, Paul Weller, Jay-Z, Beyonce, Kanye West, people like that. So I said, put this all in the email. And uh, Chris Millard, the manager director, got back to me the same day, which is pretty amazing. <laughs> Cause that I know Chris well now, and that for him to get back to you on the same day means he must like you. So uh, that, was, uh, that was good. And then it was kind of, we had a meeting, it went from there. Definitely doing a, a less of the hands-on, on the ground work than I used to. I'm, I'm not running around selling merchandise, putting social media posts up, running events uh, anymore. Uh, thankfully, we've got a team and we're growing into uh, a, a fairly big organisation where we can afford to do that and we can have uh, the infrastructure to create a better experience for everyone. Our job as the Barmy Army is to create um, the optimum experience for everyone in the ground. So whether that's people who are with the Barmy Army, support the Barmy Army, whether that's people the other side of the ground uh, who want to come and dip in and say hello and, and just show how welcoming we are, how friendly we are and why we're um, such a good thing for, for cricket and test cricket especially. The Barmy Army is about creating uh, the best experience possible at cricket and we, we really passionate, passionate cricket fans, test cricket especially, and uh, we, we want to keep it alive and keep it thriving. And you see so many English people here today. And unfortunately, other teams don't travel away as well as us. Um, we do it so well. We've got something unique. We sing songs. We have a good time. We raise money. We have events. It's just it's a community of people that's very special. And until you've experienced it, you don't really get it. And once you've experienced it, you're like, ah, I get it now. It's community. Uh -huh.